Welcome to a most amazing scene out here. It has the feel almost of a, of a soccer party or a festival, but there is still a lot of anxiety in the air because this drama has just begun. But so far, it seems triumphant. For the first 17 of the 68 days these men were trapped in the bowels of the earth, those 33 men were presumed dead, but their will to survive launched an unprecedented feat of engineering. It included scientists from NASA and drilling experts from Pennsylvania, the collective goodwill of a nation and a continent, uh, really. But this anxious party in the desert is just beginning, because not including the rescuers going down in that escape pod, there are still 32 sick and stressed men below the earth. But at the moment, spirits are lifted with the proof that what seemed impossible can be done. For loved ones here in the desert and supporters around the world. The arrival of Florencio Alvaro Silva, the first of 33 to breathe fresh air after 10 weeks in a 600 square foot tomb. His ride to the surface the first of 33 potential sirens and cheers, and it would be the culmination of a global effort. Diggers, doctors, psychologists, and engineers from around the globe. His escape capsule, designed by NASA, refined and built by Chilean submarine engineers, is called Phoenix, named for the mythical bird that rises from the ashes. And at 5.30 Eastern, it is moved to the escape hatch. An hour later, just before sundown, the Chilean president, inspects the creation. Shaped like a 13-foot cigar tube, it was designed to fit into a hole the size of a bicycle tire and travel a half-mile shaft to miners below with minimal friction. Estamos todavía unas dos horas. At 7.05, they announce a two-hour delay in the extraction launch, two more hours of agony for the families at Camp Hope, two more hours of reflection for Avalo Silva, Deemed the most technically savvy and most physically and mentally fit, he was chosen to rise first in case the worst happens. A rock could fall, wedge the pod in the shaft, the cable could get hung up, or the rig that pulls the cable could overheat. And there is a psychological toil. A camera is trained on his face, watching for signs of stress or panic. Among the physical worries below, eye damage caused by darkness, partially collapsed lungs from shallow breathing, and fungal and skin diseases because of the extended time in 90 degree humid temperatures. <laughs> to minimize these ailments, the miners were drinking salt water to alleviate nausea and possible fainting during the ascent. What astronauts call a fluid loading protocol for dealing with subgravity. They've also been given anti-anxiety medication to help prevent them from panicking on the way up. That ride is risky. At 8.30 p.m., a first test. The empty capsule is lowered into the shaft to great excitement. Rescue workers are inspired to sing a popular national chant heard over and over at soccer games. Come on, come on, come on, Chileans. It means tonight we have to win. But they've changed that last line to Los tenemos que sacar. We have to get them out. This as buses unloaded family members at the scene, preparing to reunite with their trapped loved ones amid balloons and song. 20 minutes later, the capsule returns to the surface. The first test successful. Even Chilean President Panera is moved to song in a nearby tent where family members anxiously wait. Then the pulley wheel is in motion again, a welcome sight as a rescue pod is lowered into the ground for a second time, this time to check communication devices. The test succeeds. And at 10.17 Eastern time, a rescuer named Manuel Gonzalez gets a good luck wish from his president. Buena suerte, y lo esperamos de vuelta. Climbs into the pod. And is lowered into the earth. <laughs> After a 10 minute descent, Gonzalez reaches the cavern and is greeted by giddy miners. He's the first new human they've had contact with in 10 weeks, the sign that their long ordeal is about to end. 
Gonzalez is among the rescuers who will now stay down in the mine, sending each man up as quickly and safely as possible until they've all come home. And I'm joined now by uh, ABC News' Jeffrey Kaufman covering Latin America. You've been down here sort of commuting back and forth to the mine. I, we're fortunate to be standing here and watching this happen. It's just unbelievable. It, it is incredible. I, and watching the first miner come up, I, I was down there in the crowd, and it, it really was the most, I, I think, the most festive occasion you can imagine. Forget about winning Super Bowls or World Cups, <laughs> Olympic gold. Uh, this country has won something much more, and, and these families really, and the entire world cheering them on. And you can feel it. I, I was watching reporters crying as they, were, right. as they were telling their audience about this. Uh, Florencio Avalos now, they have plans where they're going to take each of these men to the hospital for observation. He's a married uh, father of two. You saw his little boy greet him there in tears, which is so heart-wrenching. He's been a guy who's been working the camera. We've seen a lot of video come up from the mine, which has uh, caused a bit of angst with his parents because they don't get to see his face uh, on those videos now. But his brother is still down. He's still got a brother down there. Absolutely incredible. He's not slated to come up for, for quite a while. So, so they'll be separated. And, and actually the men were not eager to be taken to the hospital. They, they actually really all wanted to stay here and wait till the last came up, but they were persuaded by the, the, by the government officials. There just isn't room here for them all to stay. Now, this is a very deliberate process. It takes about an hour between each rescue. So this could go on for the next uh, 36 hours uh, at least.